me switch, let me plot out the voltage waveform for switch 2. Okay? When switch 1 is on, I am going to have Volts, right? When switch one is off, then what happens? Next section switch one is off, right? Next section switch one is off, right? So that point, what happens to my VS two? Zero. <laughs> Zero means the switch is on. It's going to be 100, right? So it's going to be 100 for. Right? Make sense? When switch 1 is off, it is 200. When switch 1 is off and switch 2 is off, I'm going to get. 100 volts across my switch to yes. basically just this circuit, right? So I have some load here. So this is going to be just whatever the voltage output here in this loop, which is just 100 volts, right? Then at this instant, yes. You can't, right? Because this switch is off and this switch is off. You are going to have whatever voltage is just going to be whatever this voltage is, right? So then it drops to zero. This is a transition what we have a T on T of something, right? And then it goes up here. And then what happens? What happens to your voltage? Once your switch two becomes off, S1 is still off, right? So it comes back to 100 volts. Right? So this is 200 volts, 100 volts, 100 volts and then when switch 1 again is on in the next cycle, I am going to have 200 volts. This is the voltage across my switch. But what do I need to find? I need to find out the switching power loss in each switch. Switching for this switch occurs only during this part. Only for this time period is switching occurs, right? Your S2 is switched on only for this much time period. So, whatever my waveform is, is going to start from here all the way till here. Not from 200, but from 100. If you assume 100 and did the whole thing, without drawing it, you can call it luck marks. So it's still 100 volts, right? The difference will come if it was switching exactly at this, if this was all the way till here, then this 200 will be all the way till here. <coughs> what so before that? So now I have, this is 200 volts, now I have 100 volts. At this instant, I'm going to switch on my switch to, and the transition time is 2 microseconds. Two microseconds here. Okay. Then I have a transition period of three microseconds, right? I have three microseconds, and I have two microseconds here. Make sense? Now I need to know what is the current across my this switch. Will I have a current across this switch here? Any current across switch 2? No. Any current up here? Still no, right? I will have some current here. What will be the current? Basically this, whatever current is flowing here. It is just 100 divided by whatever my resistance value here, which is 5 ohm. <coughs> so my current during this time is just 100 divided by 5 which is 20 amperes. So my switch to current is going to be 
here and something like something like this so this is the same as what you have for a resistive circuit the switching diagram what we did yesterday absolutely no change to this only difference is you have some other components to confuse you that's all Now this becomes easy, right? I know what is this value V S. I know what is V I I on here, this twenty here. I know T on T off. I know what is F S. So I can what I'm going to get is just hundred into twenty by six into five into ten raised to minus six into frequency is. It's just this here. That's all. For a switch one, the whole thing is just going to be shifted a bit. That's all. This will come during the start point, and everything is going to be the same. Okay. Make sense? Then, what happens if my switching cycles right goes all the way till here? This switching was still here, and this switching was all the way till here. Like traditionally, what we do switches, right? And one, it's still all the way on till here, and this becomes off, this becomes on. Then what happens? Will my voltage be remaining the same? This becomes 200 now. Drop from 200 to zero, not from 100 to zero. Similarly, this is going to be 200, and then it's going to come all the way here, not from 100. so you have to look at the profile here sometimes it may be you know may be misleading oh 100 volts very evident you know i just already use 100 volts as my vs not a problem <coughs> this switching se sequence no problem but if your se switching sequence is perfectly you know all the way here all the way here something like this the value is now two times of that not This value, okay. Next is instantaneous power loss in each switch. You know that already, right? It's just this divided by two into the current divided by two. So I have fifty into ten. So instantaneous power loss is five hundred watts. So can I say instantaneous peak? Power loss is just V S by two into I on by two. So, in terms of your values, right? I still have to sketch and dimension my output voltage. Can I sketch my output voltage now? Yeah. So, what is going to be? It's just going to be output voltage is going to be when switch one is on. Sorry, wrong diagram. <laughs> Still inverter here, but so, but full wave half wave. When switch one is on, I have hundred volts across this. Switch two is on, I'm going to have minus hundred volts. Choose a direction. Don't assume oh, I have hundred. Let's say this is plus minus, so in this here is going to be plus minus here, is going to be plus minus here. Definitely one is going to be positive, one is going to be negative voltage. Okay. Choose one direction to be positive. Let's say I take the upper one to be positive. So I can say that when S one is on, I'm assuming V output is positive. So I'm going to have voltage which looks something like.
This is your output voltage, right? If you want, you can still include your switching angles also here. The two degrees, three degrees, you can two or three microseconds you can still include here. This is your voltage waveform, right? You can just make sure you mention it. S1 on, S2 on. You mention it properly. Then you say that okay, S1 positive. So this load voltage this is positive when S1 is. I just make it here. V O is plus minus. Just do it that way. Just the diagram denote it properly. The dimension means you have to give the direction correctly there. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing on, right? The gap there's nothing on, right? So basically, you're not going to have any. Output wave function. <coughs> Tell me. When this is on, sorry, again wrong. When S1 is on, what is the voltage across this? Across my load, not my switch. Two different things. Voltage across my switch is different from voltage across my load. What is across my load is what I am going to use to you know get a current and make the load functioning. That is going to be 100 volts. But at that same instant my voltage across other switch is 200 volts. Another way to look at this is, if I just take this loop when this is on. <coughs> Let's see if I short this guy here, which is a switch on S1. This voltage is, this voltage plus this voltage. 100 volts plus 100 volts, that also gives me 200 volts. So any way you look at it, your KVL is satisfied. This way, this loop, any loop is going to satisfy your KVL. Okay, any questions here about this? So I plotted out my voltage also. If, let's say, here you may be, there may be confusion here. Do I include the transition states here? Do I include the transition states here? If you want, if you're not sure, ask the problem. Hmm? If you're not sure, ask prof, do I need to include my voltage increase or decrease depending on my switch, etc. Basically, what that means is the voltage building up across this, right, is also going to be along that way, right? the switch voltage drops this way, your load voltage is going to increase that way, right? Basically, this is how your load voltage is going to, going to increase, not exactly that way, right? Normally, you would not require to, but if you really want to check, just check with Prof about it, because it's basically three different questions. One part is to draw this out, second part is to find out your average power loss in your switch, each switch, yeah, again another thing. If you are asked to find out the total power loss in my in the switches, take this power loss, how many switches you have, multiply it. This is saying the average switching power loss across each switch. If I say average power loss across both the switches, it's just a play of words differently, that's all. Each switch means I just find for one switch and I am done with it. For both the switches, I find one. Assuming they are the same switches, I get the other one at the same value, then add them up together. These two switches <coughs> are, have, uh, have the same power loss, right? Yes. Yes. Is it one It's basically it's that whole line is a zoomed down version of it. It's not starting here or here. 
This whole line is basically this way. Yes. Yes. This is basically a switching signal, right? So when your S2, okay, yes. This comes till here, right? Till this point, I have a proper switching voltage here. Yes. After that, you start. Because once this becomes zero, only then my switching voltages and currents can change, right? Here also. At this point, you start. Yeah, no. See here, there is no. See here, there is no switching signal. So, which means I cannot have an increase in current if there is no switching signal. So, this point comes here, and this point comes here. Once I switch off my signal, then it can drop. Okay. What's the next part? So, given the thermal resistance, yes. Sorry, S1? Yes, 100. 100 minus 100. Okay? Yes. Mostly not, but if you're not sure, check with the problem. Normally, you wouldn't require to, but because this is 15 micro, this is 5 micro, you know, it's significant. This is 50 micro conducting, 2 micro goes off here, 3 micro is coming off like this, right? So you're going to have something like this, I know, it's going to be something like this. So if you draw it, you have to make sure you draw it correctly. What I'll just is if you're not sure how to draw that, better just draw this one and leave it at it. Because if you're sure to draw, then go ahead with it, no problem. If you're not, if you are sure and you still need to confirm, check with the problem. Okay. Deal with the investment insulation, right? So, and guys, yes, for your exams, right? If you have any doubts in the question, check with the prof and ask him. Okay, don't assume it's something and you know when he comes up with something else, you're like, oh, I already did it in some other way. When in doubt, ask. Doesn't matter if you do it 50 times. Okay? So the next part is, we have to find a given the thermal resistance, basically. Now here, I have to connect, basically connecting, I don't know what this is. <laughs> okay, I have to connect two heat sinks to my S1 and S2, each. Here, okay, very important guys, you guys please listen. The thermal resistance for the junction to the casing of each switch is 0.4 degrees Celsius per watt. The maximum ambient temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. I don't think you are in Singapore. Yeah. Some other <laughs> the device junction temperature is to be limited to 120 degrees Celsius. Determine the thermal resistance of the heat sink to be chosen for each device from the device casing to the ambient. It doesn't say determine the heat sink for both the devices. Is heat sink for each device, which means each device has its own exclusive heat sink. So I can just analyze each device by itself. I don't have to connect them in parallel or anything, not necessary here. Okay? So in that case, what I'm going to get is <coughs> what is the power loss here for each device? Here, our off losses and uh, conducting losses, we don't give, we are not given any values here. The V on, we can assume it to be zero. I leakage is assumed to be zero because we are not given any values. If you are given the values, make sure that you add up whatever this power, right? What this power? Whatever this value you get here, right? Add that to your P conduction and your P off and you get a total power loss in your device, in each device, okay? That corresponds to your P dissipated or your P loss, right? This is for each device what I have. So, where is this generated at your junction? The junction is generated. This is what's going to cause you heat. If I don't use a heat sink, 
If I don't use a heat sink, can I manage here? <coughs> Mostly not, right? Because 40 degrees, what a formula? Tj minus Ta divided by this should be the R value, right? So I have basically this is heat sink. The question explicitly asks you to find out the, that there is a heat sink. You don't have to verify that there is a heat sink or not. There is a heat sink. You have to use a heat sink. Okay. For this, what is the value of the casing? Sorry, thermal resistance of the heat sink to be chosen for each device <coughs> from the device casing all the way to the ambient. It's basically saying that okay, it's not just from the heat sink to the ambient. It's not just RSA. It's from RCS plus RSA. So basically, this is your unknown part here. This is given to us as 0.4. This is given to us as 120 and 40 degrees. <coughs> so I have Tj minus Ta by <coughs> So shouldn't the device be calibrated to the maximum power loss? Why? <coughs> Which means I cannot have a load larger than this or a smaller than this. Okay. Now your load is a function of your current, right? Let's say if I had, instead of I had 2 ohms. Which means my I on is going to be 50 amperes. Which means this is going to be larger. <coughs> so in this condition whatever we have <coughs> we have to design the heat sink here the assumption could be that this is the largest possible you know load I have this is not the exclusively only for this guy here <coughs> any currents higher than this I can manage no sorry lower than this I can manage my heat sink in this situation I have to make sure that my heat sink doesn't go above 120 sorry my junction temperature doesn't go above 120 degrees so, it's basically just a simple formula here, right? So, given this formula, right? In your formula sheet. So, this is just 120 minus 40 by 33.33333. plus RCA. It gives me 2.4. So, RCA is just 2 degrees Celsius per watt. If you make mistakes here, right? Only way you can make mistake is you are closing your eyes and entering your values in the calculator. Okay, let me be adventurous. That's the only way you can make a mistake here. It's, it can't get easier than this here. It's not even to find out RCS separately, RSE separately. Just one brand, whole big value, R. P A directly for the whole thing. Yes. If I didn't calculate my P loss from the last three part, may I assume a number to get as many points as possible or no chance? Only for the equation. Which which uh, number? If I don't get my P loss for example <coughs> from the last three part. You would be given in some form. Either you will be given this the question is designed such that you find the P loss from your previous question and use it for the next part. Yes. If this is not the you'll be given, okay, P loss is a function of frequency. Yeah, but it wasn't given in the, in the final exam what we're doing right now. There was there was not like assume P loss is whatever if it isn't calculated. No, that assumption is you should you should have calculated it here. Yes, but if it's wrong, I won't get any points. You will get some points because this is the only way if you write down these equations at least you may get some marks for this. But if you just write down the equation from your formula sheet directly here, for that you won't get any marks. Because 
Okay, think about it this way. This is one last 25 mark question. Where this is the first part of the question. To get this part wrong, you're not going to get more than this. Just what? Oh, this is 10 marks. So possibly you may get two or three marks. Possibly not more than that. <laughs> If you basically found this value as a wrong value, you shouldn't though. It shouldn't be, you know, a wrong case. For any of such questions, right, for such cases, right, if you are given such waveforms, right, plot it out. It will be very, very clear what's going to happen. Yes. Right? The temperature we got the casing, right, it will be the power law times the JC value. Sorry, the, the temperature? Uh, temperature without the casing. Without, ah. the casing right? without the casing can't be there. So as you like, if the astronaut is fine, so it will be uh, the P loss, uh, the power loss times the JC value, right? The junction to junction in, but in this case, because we don't have a casing, so it's straight away JC, right? Let me ask you to find this. This here. Yes, sorry. You can't. Because you need to have, you cannot have just a junction. It will be in some form of casing, right? Your MOSFET or transistor, whatever, the outside, what you see is the casing. Another way to look at this question is, each casing to a heatsink will have a different CS. Yes. So there's one to cover question where you say that whether the thing can function without a casing. Sorry? Whether the, this device can function Without a heatsink, not a casing. The question is without a heatsink, which means you are at this point. <coughs> when you are given R, J, A directly, right? Mm -hmm. The junction to the ambient or the casing to the ambient directly. At the end, all your heat has to be dissipated to your ambient temperature. So even if you don't use a heatsink, you need to know what is your R, C, A. Or if you don't even use a casing, then R, J, A. And practically you you cannot have a device without a casing. You need to have a casing. The junction is basically, you know what, we assume something's happening inside, right? Not, not actually what we see, right? Somewhere inside something's happening. Okay? Okay about this question? Yes.